recommend it over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this mother box. She needs some repairs. Oh. Oh. Anyway, once again, live on tape from an undisclosed secret location somewhere in the bowels of historic downtown St. John's, Newfoundland, the oldest settlement in North America comes in the Library of Graphic Literature with your host, him, Wallace Rowling. So, had to do a bit of a spin there. Uh, uh, this week, of course, is, uh, it's actually not a not a lot of books this week, um, so I've decided to, to make this a, a special episode um, featuring uh, the original Captain Marvel himself, Shazam. Dun, dun, dun. But before we get to that, uh, let's have a look at one of the books anyway. What the other book I'm going to look at, at has to do with Shazam, so we'll have a look at that as I go through that. But first of all, let us first open up. At long last, from Image and Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples comes. Do 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 do. Ooh, ooh, look at this. I wish they'd actually put that onto the back. Now, what I'll do with that is I will actually slip that into the back of the book. Well, don't really want to do it. I kind of wish they would. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I should print it on the, 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 the cover next time uh, image. So anyway, volume three ooh, from image uh, and it's saga. I'm still reading volume two. I'm about halfway through that. So uh, this is, I'm going to have to catch up with this. But uh, of course, one of the most uh, one of the most acclaimed uh, books out there recent books some cool stuff cool artwork great concepts bizarre stories but highly fascinating won't show you too much I don't want to give it away but uh check it out it's definitely worth worth buying for sure okay and now whew, let's uh, put this stuff away here uh, Shazam of course or the original Captain Marvel started around, uh, well, started in 1939 with Fawcett Comics and Wiz Comics number two was originally in the, as a matter of fact, here on the back you'll see this Flash Comics and uh, those were the uh, the ash cans that they, they, they did to, uh, it was Flash and there was another one too, Flash, oh, and Thrill Comics, which they couldn't use because of other uh, companies. Oh, and there's Captain Thunder, which of course they changed to Captain Marvelous, uh, which was a uh, suggestion uh, from Pete Costanza, and then they shortened it to Captain Marvel, which was kind of cool anyways. Uh, so the uh, uh, Shazam was created, of course, by the team. Oh, and here's Wiz Comics number two. Really like Wiz Comics number one is what it is. And this, of course, is the uh, the origin of <coughs> of all. Oh, let me take this off so I can get up close to, to you to you folks there. <coughs> so this, of course, is the DC Archives edition. It's with comics number two, and this, of course, details the origin of Captain Marvel as he goes down, follows some stranger, which of course you should never do, down into a tunnel. And he gets aboard some sort of subway train, which takes him past the seven deadly enemies of man. And uh, and once in there, he meets uh, the old wizard Shazam, who has a chat with him, and then turns him into uh, Captain Marvel before, of course, dropping a huge block on top of him, killing him. So he becomes the new Shazam, or the new or Captain Marvel anyway. Oh, and there's Dr. Savannah, his, uh, his nemesis. And he goes from there. <coughs> I actually kind of like the, uh, 
kind of like uh, Captain Marvel. There's just something, another, especially nowadays too, when you read it too, there's something very quaint about looking back at it. Love the covers too, by the way. Beautiful covers. So yeah, C.C. Beck was the artist. And a guy by the name of Bill Parker was the writer. So the, uh, so yeah. Those, those are the first few. <coughs> uh, the, uh, let me wrap this one up. So there's, I think, there were only four, yeah, four volumes of the Captain Marvel uh, Shazam archives from DC way back when. And, oh, let me put this here. Uh, here we go, we have uh, Archives Volume 2. And with this one, I think we start to see, uh, oh yeah, and this one, actually, this one is uh, quite interesting because this one is, uh, I know a lot of people may not realize this, but there was a uh, issue, special issue, <coughs> of, uh, I guess, did they call it 64 pages of uh, <laughs> Captain Marvel Adventures, that's it. <clears throat> and this is this here. And Captain Marvel Adventures was done by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. So, uh, so yeah, so Jack Kirby actually got to uh, take his shot at, uh, at Shazam. Now, of course, you, you can, this is, of course, old-style Kirby and all that. So it does look like his early artwork and all that. But it looks like he modeled Billy after C.C. Uh, Beck's uh, take on him and tried to keep him like that but the a lot of the figures and stuff like that are are without doubt uh, are Kirby all the way I can like here stuff like this it's just just reeks of Kirby there you can tell by the action in it and all that but anyway yeah so uh, definitely worth checking out and uh, then we go back to uh, now, uh, <coughs> Parker and Beck also created Spy Smasher, who appears in a, in a few in a few Shazam stories. Uh, this one, CC Beck. Oh yeah, Pete Costanza in some of these here, and uh, and Charles Sultan did the art on Spy Smasher. Uh, so there are a couple of stories mixed in with in here with this. So it's pretty cool actually. I like the idea of Spy Smasher. Oh, so now we get into, geez, what are we at here? With, we're up to about ooh, Mar America's Greatest Comics featuring Captain Marvel, Bullet Man, Minute Man, Spy Smasher, and Mr. Scarlet. Uh, and this one of course, this, is, this ha actually has some uh, early work by George Tusca who was probably better well known for his work on uh, on Marvel Comics, funny enough, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if he did any DC Comics or not, but uh, he was around in the, you know, in the 50s, 60s, and uh, 70s, uh, uh, he did a lot of, a lot of comics for Marvel in the, in the 70s, he was a real, I guess a real, uh, you know, machine when it came to churning out uh, comics, so they, 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 that's why they had him on. Uh, and the writer for a lot of these, of course, a lot of them are marked unknown, and some of them are marked uh, Rod Reed. Oh, okay, they're, not all of them are, are unknown, but a lot of them are, are mark, marked unknown. Uh, and this kept going till, you know, they, they worked together, Parker and Becca, uh, on. Uh, on Captain Marvel till about uh, 1942 which was when uh, Parker went to war and uh, he was replaced by Otto Binder who then continued to work with with Beck oh here we go see this check it out uh, and this is of course volume 4 the last volume I I'd actually wouldn't mind seeing uh, them uh, uh, re-release redo these in an omnibus form even though I do have them in the archives but I mean this only goes up as far as uh, Wiz Comics 25 and 
was another 10 issues at least there. And then of course there's a lot of other stuff here. This book contains a, um, some book, some uh, work by Mac Raboy, one of the uh, great early, early illustrators. Uh, Raboy, I suppose, Beck was sort of cartoonish where Raboy was, was a lot more realistic and uh, and I actually prefer his stuff. He did a lot of the uh, 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 the Captain Marvel Jr. What is his name? Uh, there. Yeah, Captain Marvel Jr. Uh, comics and Master Comics. Uh, and to me, in terms of the art, at least he's he obviously superior in some form, in some ways, to uh, to Beck because Beck Beck had a more cartoonish uh, version while. Uh, course uh, Raboy was a, a lot more uh, was a lot more realistic uh, and in this one I think he does the uh, oh yeah the origin of he does the uh, origin of Captain Marvel Jr. Uh, and the coming of Captain Nazi stuff like that uh, but uh, yeah love uh, love his stuff uh, Raboy's uh, Captain Marvel is just uh, or Captain Marvel Jr. is just fabulous, Be beautiful drawings. Uh, I know. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. A lot more dramatic, a lot more, a lot more in tune, like say with modern artists. Very well drawn. Look at those. Them Nazis. He's smashing them Nazis. So yeah, oh there we go. That's a bit more of a boy there. Now of course, along with this we have, and they only did one volume of this, the Marvel family, uh, representing the Golden Age adventures of Captain Marvel Jr. and the origin of Mary Marvel. Check that out. Now Mary Marvel's, I think her, let's see, she was Mark Swayze. Okay, they have Mark Swayze there. Hmm. But yeah, most of this book was uh, was done by Macro Boy. And here we go. You get to have a look. His he was definitely influenced more by someone say like Alex Raymond and the other fine fine artists of uh, of comic strip fame at the time. And because uh, I mean, like I say, uh, there, there's a lot of Golden Age artwork. Admittedly, is rather crude and all that. But there were people like Roy Boy and uh, and so on who are actually quite a uh, for for the time were quite uh, sophisticated. Eisner among them, and and Kirby too. Actually, I think Kirby was quite sophisticated for the for this time. Boy, that Master Comics. <laughs> I don't know if you'd be able to have a comic called Master Comics these days. But yeah, and there's uh, the uh, the Nazis. Nazis make great villains, don't they? But yeah, absolutely stunning artwork. I love his his artwork. Love this cover too. This is one of my favorites. Uh, oh, and then uh, so. Uh, but then, of course, came the infamous lawsuit that DC launched against them, uh, and uh, the lawsuit went on and on, dragged on and on. And uh, at first, actually, they they declared that DC didn't have a copyright on Superman. But then that was reversed by a lower court, and uh, it just it was, it was starting to drag on. And actually, this and even though at the time. Uh, was comic and Captain Marvel it was one of the top selling heroes of the Golden Age as it got into the 50s and all that. Uh, like a lot of superhero comics after the war, the sales began to wane and trail off, and uh, uh, basically uh, Fawcett paid, geez, I think it was like geez, it was a half million dollars. They paid a bit to DC and they ceased publication. And uh, and that's where it, where it languished. Now, in the meantime, there was, of course, the Captain Marvel that came apart into pieces. Uh, then Marvel's Captain Marvel. And uh, and then in uh, 1972, uh, Fawcett Soul uh, licensed uh, uh, the Captain to 
to uh, DC Comics, and that's where we've begun here, actually. And we'll open this here. This is, of course, this is new, <laughs> but I wanted to uh, give, it, give it a proper intro introduction. Um, so, uh, and then 1972 comes along, and DC, for some reason, decides, hey, this, this might be a cool thing for them to, <laughs> which is ironic considering they were suing about it, and now they, they were all over it. Uh, in the end, they acquired all the rights to all the uh, Marvel uh, family characters by, I think it was 1991. And uh, they, uh, and basically he, he's become fully uh, uh, inducted into the DC Universe now. So uh, he's been in all kinds of things. Uh, uh, well, we'll have a look at this first before, before I get on to this. Uh, so this was, doo -doo -doo, I like this actually, great cover. This is Shazam, the world's mightiest mortal as a... Uh, as they uh, had it uh, on the front of the covers, but actually on the front of the covers they originally had, and I'll see if, yeah, there we go, they originally had, here's the first issue from, from from the 70s there, and as you look closely you'll see they actually had Shazam, the original Captain Marvel, uh, and of course Marvel Comics got upset about that so they changed it and, and uh, they started began running the byline of the world's mightiest mortal, and he was he began to be referred to as Shazam. Uh, now he's still called Captain Marvel and all that, but they don't, you know, they don't push it or whatever. Well, great, uh, looks like a Murphy Anderson, but and of course they uh, they brought back C.C. Beck to write on it now to to draw it. Uh, of course, Denny O'Neill did the. Uh, the writing and here's the retelling of it and I think uh, I think Beck by this time had really come out into his own and there you have Mary Marvel oh I love this comic here this cover here pretty cool and you know he did he did in a tiger to Tony Tiger so he uh, it was pretty cool actually now, uh, <coughs> He stayed, Beck stayed with him for a while, and, uh, but he eventually, uh, ooh, oh, Captain Marvel Jr. story, and this one looks like, yeah, it's a, uh, looks like Kurt Schaffenberger, actually this looks like Kurt Schaffenberger inked, no, it's Dave Cockrum, actually one of my favorite errors, I thought it looked familiar for a second I was going to say it looks like Kurt Schaffenberger or inked by Dave Cockrum but no it's a Dave Cockrum story which of course is cool beans anyway uh, and it lasted till about issue 38 but uh, eventually um, uh, Kurt Schaffenberger took over oh, and here's another uh, Captain Marvel Jr. story that looks like it's also by, uh, by, uh, oh no, Dick Gordana. Okay. Oh, and there's a hundred pager. Love those hundred pagers, by the way. And eventually, uh, Kurt Schaffenberger actually took over and began drawing, drawing it. I always kind of like Schaffenberger's artwork. He has sort of a neat innocence to him. And, uh, and went on from there. And Bob Oskner, I do believe, uh, also did a, a few, uh, few episodes and uh, like I say it ended in uh, issue 35 uh, and he kind of languished and bopped around here and there different series stuff like that but he actually even put in a guest appearance as you can see right here when uh, the Justice League uh, revamped themselves in the uh, oh, here we go In May of 87. There we go. There's the famous cover. You can see, of course, the captain right there. Now, he only lasts about <coughs> eight issues <laughs> into it before he's gone. Um, just brought that out just, just to point that out. And then he, he sort of disappears into the void of DC Comics. And uh, Ordway, I think, did a, in 91, did a uh, Power of Shazam uh, series that was. Uh, 
graphic novel that was very well received and then they they ran a series for a while uh, <coughs> and uh, and he actually appears that's reading Kingdom Come and he's he's actually a bit of a well I can't tell you that actually now that I think about it it'd be a bit of a spoiler there um, but he's uh, it's not good. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, from there um, we go uh, and to the, to the final thing I'm going to show you here actually uh, this week is uh, uh, he, he eventually becomes fully integrated into the DC universe and stuff like that coming out as a movie eventually just uh, this year. But uh, along the way in 19, 2007 actually it is, uh, I think it was 2007. Uh, let's double check this here. Uh, yeah, 2007. In 2007, he gets the treatment from Jeff Smith of Bone fame, uh, Shazam, the Monster Society of Evil. Obviously no uh, real mention of Captain Marvel there <laughs> at all at, at this point. Um, and this, he, he uh, this reintroduces him and all that goes through his origin uh, again and uh, uh, he meets with, uh, you know, comes against Savannah and he meets Mary, Mary Marvel is, uh, who actually stays as a, as a kid in, the, in this one. Uh, but beautiful artwork, this is, this is actually one of my favorite Shazam stories. And of course, why not, because it's, uh, it's been done by, uh, one of the modern masters of uh, comic books, Jeff Smith himself. So any of you Bone fans, see if you can hunt this down and find this. Like I say, this is, oh geez, it's 12 years old now that I think about it. But yeah, it's a uh, it's great, great story. Beautiful art. Very well done. Not only that, but the, the cover, the front cover itself actually folds out into a big poster. Of which I'm not going to fold out. <laughs> fold it out for you here now, uh, because uh, well, I don't want to unfold it and have to fold it all back up. Um, and then that brings us, like I say, right up to today. Now they did do there was a Shazam series in the uh, New Fifty Two by I think it was Gary Frank. And you know, not bad and all that, but uh, to me, uh, when I think of Shazam and, and the original Captain Marvel, I think of Beck and Schaffenberger and uh, Ordway and Smith, I guess, were, in my my opinion, some of the the, the best uh, purveyors of of the uh, of the original Captain Marvel. Anyway, this show actually, I'm going to dedicate this to T. Stewart. I don't know T.'s first name, of course. He was the one who originally asked me at some point do uh, something uh, a story about uh, an episode about uh, Captain Marvel, and I said yes, I would. Now, a lot of times when people make requests. I, I actually do write them on a list and I keep them and when I knew that I only had one real book besides the other, besides the Captain Marvel book there too, I figured this would be a perfect time to do it. So with that, uh, that's the end of it. So next week, uh, next week is also going to be a small week so I'm going to do some kind of special for next week so who knows what it will be. In the meantime, Shazam! Shazam? Shazam? Oh, I guess it doesn't work in the real world. Okay, anyway, um, same time, same bad channel next week. Love all of you out there. Uh, I hope people are liking the Friday afternoon uh, shows because uh, well, it gives me a bit of time to do a little bit of, of research, especially in the, any books that I may not have read before and that sort of thing, and, uh, and hand it all over to you folks. Anyway, that being said, it's time for me to go. Anyway, love you all. Keep on reading. See you next week.